noticed. Yeah. Weirdly, the birds haven't touched them. They don't seem to come this far. Hello, no, Mr. Man. Miss Minky. Oh, okay, we've had enough. We haven't had enough. It's the birthday boy. He's got the sun in his eyes. It's a B B B Q. The extra B is for birthday. Oh, birthday boy. Birthday boy B Q. Can you stop? Hey, can you stop? It's not appropriate, is it? You're playing the happy birthday song in the background. It's too quiet. Happy birthday to you. Hey. This is. That was so overwhelming. Uh, but come on, if, if, if you've not done it for how many years, bro? It's your whole life, more or less. What? Hi. <laughs> it's 5.30 in the morning on a Sunday, and I'm up very early because in about an hour, I'm going to leave my house, not just randomly, me and my family are going on our annual visit to the Lake District. I'm going to stay there for a couple of days, climb some mountains, swim in some lakes. This is now the third year of our tradition, so you've actually missed the only other times that we've done this. But I'll try and show you as much as I can, but it's tough because we will mostly be up mountains and in water, which are not good places to have a phone out. Why 5am though, Chloe? Well, because... I'm gonna leave at about 6.30 and that gets me to a rendezvous point just outside of the M25 for 8 o'clock in the morning. From there my brother's gonna pick me up with the rest of our family already in the car and then we are embarking on the remaining five hours of the journey to Cumbria. It's a pretty long stretch, we're also building in an hour for like stopping points and petrol stations and all that. I know for you Americans out there that's not the longest <laughs> road trip in the world but for us it's pretty harsh but we should be getting to the place we're staying at in the lake district for about yeah four or five pm off i go <laughs> Made it. We're now here at Westwater. This is the deepest lake in England. Behind it, one of these, <laughs> I can't remember which, is the highest mountain in England, Scaffold Pike. Um, my hair's wet, you may notice. That was because I was just in there. It's a little tradition of ours. Family loves to do a bit of wild swimming and Westwater is a favourite, but it is incredibly cold. Very bracing, <laughs> but you get used to it. And it's actually now colder being here in the air than it is in the water. So yeah, that's going to be most of this little holiday, being in the water and also be, being up that mountain, whichever, <laughs> whichever one it is behind me. There we are. We are far enough north now that it is nine o'clock at night. Sun's still out. Like, it's not even that. It's nine o'clock and it's still a little bit light out. Like, it's literal, actual glorious sunshine. Six o'clock in the morning, and we're checking out the hotel, and then we are going to climb a mountain, or <laughs> we're going to try to. The weather's not looking great, and conditions at an elevation of 900 plus meters is very different than it is on the ground, so if there is even light rain or light wind, that turns into storms and gales uh, as soon as you get up, so we'll see. May have to abandoned mission but we're gonna give it a damn good go yeah we'll go nice and steady but we do have to make a certain time okay <laughs> we're walking for about 15 minutes we are some meters high up the shot doesn't really do it justice look at that big mountains big mountains and yet smaller than the one we're about to climb the camera doesn't really do it justice how high up we are but we are still Got a bit of a ways to go. We've got to get across this tumbling river to get to the path on the other side. Here's wreckying one way across. I'm exhausted by the way, like being no doubt. This is this is tough and we knew it would be. But we just gotta we gotta keep going. Oh he's across! Right, that easy then. <laughs> Off you go. Still going. How high do you reckon we are now? High. <laughs> how many how many meters up do you reckon? Oh, 
of, I don't know, 500, 600. Wow, okay. Okay, well, <laughs> we made it. We're at the top of England. It only took me three hours longer than average, but we're here, just in time for it to start raining. Also, you can't really see anything because we're in a literal cloud right now, which is pretty amazing. Also, there's a dog here. The dog beat me. We're now making our way back down the mountain. There are two things that got me up the mountain in the first place. First, and most importantly, bragging rights. You can bet I'm going to be talking about this for a few decades at least. Second, Sam and Frodo. Because if they can do it, I can do it. But here's, here's the thing about Sam and Frodo. Uh, well done, getting up Mount Doom, destroying the ring. Obviously very difficult. Um, they did get a lift back with some eagles afterwards. We've got to walk back to the car now. So, same journey again, but backwards. Just pointing to that in the very distance. We've just emerged from the cloud line. That's where we were. In fact, you can't even see where we were because A, it's in cloud and B, it's higher than that point that you can see in the distance. Just stopping to refill our water with fresh mountain spring water. Filtered, of course. Good catch. So we're just over halfway down the mountain now. When I get to a pub, which is where we're going next, I'm gonna have a pint of Coke, a pint of water, a pint of apple juice. Three, three drinks minimum. Across the bridge we go. It's a brand new day and today uh, my brother took us waterfall hunting and he found it. Thank you, thank you, yes I know. I won't lie, it was a bit of a mission to get here but it's all worth it because it's a beautiful series of cascading waterfalls. And now we're going to do some wild swimming. And he's in! And he's in! <laughs> they made it. Oh, it's deep here. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> no time like the present. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit bracing. Man versus waterfall. Oh, what was that? What was that? You're not even in the white bit. You were so far away from the waterfall. Was that anything? I don't think that was anything. They're trying to sneak up on the waterfall. I cannot believe I'm sitting here in a mermaid tail and they're being the children. They went back to do it again. What are they doing? Yeah. Right. Where's this ladder going then? Who's, who's using and climbing this ladder? They've understood the brief. <laughs> Last, third and last day in the Lake District. So time for one last swim. We're now here at Rydal Water. It's raining. <laughs> it's already pretty cold. Let's get colder, why not? <laughs> right, stop that. It's silly. Now go on, do your bit. <laughs> Camera's running. So here we are in, um, in, uh, well, you know where are we? we are. <laughs> <laughs> Line. <laughs> What's my motivation? I don't know what you said! Your exact words were, gonna do a funny bit. <laughs> and, and that was it. The whole thing about line and motivation, that was the whole okay. improvisation. Yeah, okay, I'm going now, bye. So here I am, in Rydal Water. Pretty far out, although I can still touch the ground here. And it's so peaceful, but I'm just surrounded by these beautiful mountains. And it's <laughs> wonderful, peaceful water. You know those videos where it's just like, in my head I'm here. This is where I am, when I'm at work or on the tube or stressed. <laughs> this is where I am mentally. But now I'm here actually. And now it's raining, so we're leaving as fast as we can. I'm home now, I'm back in my house, back with Kiki, who's asleep over there somewhere. Our Lake District adventure has come to a conclusion. So here's what I've learned about climbing a mountain. <laughs> Especially from climbing the tallest mountain in England, which, looking back at the footage, I don't know if I actually mentioned. That is the mountain we climbed. Scaffold Pike is the highest peak in England. It's not the UK, England specifically. The first thing I'm going to say, it's not something I learned. I think it's something that I already knew. <laughs> it's fairly apparent, which is that climbing a mountain is really difficult. Not for my brother. 
who is a trained mountaineer, uh, not for my sister-in-law, who is very active in her job, and not for my dad, who I highly suspect may or may not be immortal. It's nearly 1,000 metres in height, so it wasn't a 1,000 metre walk, it was 1,000 metres up. 14 kilometres there and back in the end from the car park to the summit to the car park again. And here's the thing that I learned. And again, this is something that we're kind of told and that we kind of know and we hear all the time. But to have it demonstrated so clearly, so bluntly, actually living the experience of it was kind of a game changer. And that is that when I was climbing this mountain, <laughs> having zero mountain climbing experience <laughs> and knowing that the average climb time for this particular peak is about three to four hours. Three to four hours in, I was only halfway up. And because we were worried about bad weather setting in, I didn't want my brother, my sister-in-law and my dad to not get to the top because they are waiting for me because they were capable of doing it much faster than I was. So I said to them, you go on without me, you get to the top, you have a nice time there, you turn around, come back and just meet me at whichever point I managed to get to during this climb. I knew that given enough time, I could make it up there. Um, on sheer spite and determination alone but because of the weather conditions I was on a ticking clock basically. Anyway all this to say that for the couple of hours that I was alone climbing the mountain in all that time people were constantly overtaking me and I'm talking senior citizens, children, dogs, all of them overtaking me and all of them saying you're nearly there keep going. I think the thing that we hear a lot in terms of progression and our lives and our careers is that you can't judge your own pace and your own development and your own progression by how other people are doing because everyone's on their own journey everyone has their own skills everyone has their own abilities and stamina and in the end every single one of those people that overtook me got to the top of the mountain before me but I still got to the top of the mountain and my joy and relief and my moment of celebration of getting to that top of the mountain was not lessened by the fact that they got there first. In fact, there was something incredibly empowering and uplifting about the way when I reached the top of the mountain, my friends and family were waiting there for me and so were many strangers who had gotten there first and they all cheered, they all congratulated me and they weren't bragging, they weren't competitive, they were just happy to see that I'd gotten to the point that they'd gotten to too. And we had this moment of, this is you reaching the top of the mountain and we are celebrating you now. You went at your own pace, but you never gave up and it doesn't matter who got here first because now we're all here. And you can take away from that what you will. Um, I, th <laughs> I think the metaphor is pretty obvious, but yeah, having lived that experience of actually feeling the joy of reaching a goal and knowing that it didn't matter how long it took and knowing that I enjoyed getting there and saw amazing views, crossed some rivers, drank some natural waterfall water. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've learned from climbing my first mountain. I hope there are other mountains because I'm going to get to the top of those too. Oh, We've come here to Osterley House and Garden uh, to do a little fairy photo shoot. We we're originally going to go to a fairy market festival type situation. I've got a uh, plant in my hair already and do fairy stuff there. Unfortunately it did get rained and wind and stormed off but we roll with the punches and now here we are. <laughs> my fairy helpers! Yay! 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 <laughs> They're straight up now. They look, they look much happier. They do. Thank you. It's dancing. It's beautiful. This is a very beautiful garden. That's a flower. That's some flowers. Oh, thistles, careful. Oh my god! <laughs> we were told to be careful of high winds! We did not heed the warning! This is incredible. I think so. I just don't know if I can get far back enough. So now we're in Austin House. People used to own this place just for parties. <laughs> Leo He gave up so quickly. Buddy, advocate for yourself. Oh, yeah, she said it out. Don't help me. Help. Dog fairy. Apiary. What's that? It's okay, it's okay. There's still time, there's still time. Hot. 
Today we're in the crafting studio. Trish is making sand stuff. Quill has finished making some sand stuff. Em will be making bees. And I learned how to do this. <laughs> there it is. There's that good, good sand. I'm just going to power post by the window. I want to do like a ranking of our like top 10 creepiest crafts. Because <laughs> this, this is pretty, pretty high up there. At this point, we're going to have these hurricane glasses and a stemless martini glass. But... Sammy! <laughs> He's broken it. Did you get enough material? He actually has broken it. Uh, yeah, is anyone going to top your pot? Off you guys. No, don't. Don't make it violent. I'll throw some D's. Add in some Thank D's. you. But you've got to do it backwards. Okay, yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Are you helping? Hello. Are you helping? Being a helpful girl. He's really purring. <laughs> You're quite excited. <laughs> Context, I made this tiramisu a year ago. Oh, just over a year. Just like 14 months. Is it still okay? Wow. I, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Edith has not stopped talking about, or rather, you said that you Yeah, wouldn't you eat. ruined tiramisu for me. Every tiramisu I've had since you made this last. It's so I hope this is good. <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> what it is is that you sing it like you know the words, but you don't. John writes them down. Mike's right down. <laughs> Past week or so. I have been back on storyboarding. It looks like I've not done any work. All the work I have done is on different pages, but I don't want to show you that just yet. So yeah, that's been keeping me busy past few days and more. Me, Tom and Charlie were hopefully gonna go see a movie. Uh, we were thinking Barbie movie because everyone is seeing Barbie movie and Barbie movie looks great. First of all, it's worth noting that there are at least three large multi-screen cinemas available to us. I mean, there's loads, there's hundreds. This is London. But there are three that are like a good distance away from Central, so they're reasonably priced but easy to get to. And these cinemas are not silly. They knew that Barbie and Oppenheimer, etc., would be extremely popular because of everything that's happening <laughs> on the internet. So there are screenings of both films about every half hour. It's also a Tuesday night, you know, not a, not a popular night out. There is not a single showing of Barbie this entire evening. <laughs> That has three seats together in three cinemas, showings every half hour on a Tuesday night. Insane. Incredibly happy for Barbie. Uh, incredibly happy for cinema. Not having a night off anymore, though. <laughs> I'm back to storyboarding. Boyfriends. 